Today, we're diving into a crucial topic that could be a game changer in survival situations, SHTF or shit hits the fan scenarios. In this video, we'll be focusing on what not to do to ensure your survival. Understanding these pitfalls is as vital as knowing the right steps to take. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, maintain composure. Maintaining composure in high stress situations is paramount for survival. When the proverbial shit hits the fan, panic can be a silent killer. In the chaos, individuals may find themselves making irrational decisions, which can have dire consequences. Therefore, understanding how to keep a cool head is not just a suggestion, it's a necessity. Firstly, recognize that fear is a natural response to danger. However, allowing fear to morph into panic is where the trouble begins. Panic clouds judgment and impedes our ability to think rationally. To combat this, focus on controlled breathing. Deep breaths help regulate your nervous system and maintain cognitive function. Moreover, maintaining composure involves realistic assessments of the situation. Understand the severity of the crisis without letting it overwhelm you. Prioritize tasks based on immediate needs. This could include securing shelter, assessing available resources, and establishing a plan for communication. Another crucial aspect is adaptability. High stress situations are dynamic and flexibility is key. Rigidity in thinking can lead to frustration and increased anxiety. Embrace the fluidity of the situation and be open to adjusting your plans as needed. Importantly, leadership and clear communication play pivotal roles. If you're part of a group, a calm and composed demeanor can inspire confidence in others. This fosters a collective effort towards survival. Effective communication ensures everyone is on the same page, reducing the risk of misunderstandings and unnecessary panic. Remember, maintaining composure is not about suppressing emotions, but channeling them effectively. Acknowledge fear, stress, or anxiety, and then direct that energy into constructive actions. This might involve problem solving, resource allocation, or offering support to others in the group. Number two, safeguarding resources. Safeguarding resources in a SHTF scenario goes beyond mere accumulation. It demands strategic management for sustained survival. As scarcity becomes a harsh reality, the ability to efficiently handle resources becomes non-negotiable. First and foremost, dispel the notion that hoarding equates to preparedness. Excessive accumulation can lead to waste and potential conflict. Instead, focus on a thoughtful rationing strategy, prioritizing essentials like food, water, and medical supplies. Understanding the nutritional value of available foods is crucial. Creating a balanced diet ensures sustained nourishment. Consider factors such as shelf life and nutritional content to make the most of your resources. Water, often overlooked, is indispensable. Explore purification methods and consider sustainable options like rainwater harvesting. Efficient water management extends beyond personal use, encompassing communal needs and agricultural considerations. Strategic resource allocation isn't solely an individual effort. It necessitates community involvement. Establish systems for sharing resources within a group to prevent disparities and promote solidarity. This cooperative approach extends the lifespan of available resources. Avoid common mistakes like indiscriminate consumption and neglecting renewable resources. Recognize the value of nature's provisions, such as edible plants and local fauna. Learning about the local environment turns it into a source of sustenance. Adaptability is paramount. Circumstances change, and being able to adjust your resource management strategy accordingly is vital. Stay informed about the evolving situation and be ready to modify plans as needed. Consider alternative energy sources to reduce dependence on traditional power grids. Solar panels, wind turbines, and other sustainable options can provide energy for essential devices, ensuring access to crucial information and minimizing strain on conventional power sources. Number three, prioritize hygiene and health. 
prioritizing hygiene and health in the midst of a crisis is not merely about comfort, it is a critical component of survival. Neglecting these aspects can open the door to illnesses that pose a greater threat than the crisis itself, begin with personal hygiene. Beyond the immediate discomfort, poor personal hygiene can lead to infections and diseases. In challenging times, access to clean water may be limited, making it essential to maximize the use of available resources. Prioritize basic practices such as hand washing, oral hygiene, and regular bathing to mitigate the risk of infections. Creating a clean environment is equally vital. In close quarters, maintaining cleanliness prevents the spread of diseases, regularly disinfect commonly, touch surfaces, communal spaces, and shared items. Proper waste disposal is crucial to prevent the breeding of disease vectors. Implementing these measures not only protects individuals, but contributes to the overall well-being of the community. Addressing medical concerns requires a proactive approach. Knowledge of basic first aid is invaluable. Learn to identify and treat common injuries and illnesses. Having a well-equipped medical kit is essential, ensuring you have the necessary supplies to manage injuries and address health issues. Consider any pre-existing medical conditions within the group and plan accordingly. In challenging times, mental health is often overlooked but is integral to overall well-being. Stress and anxiety can compromise the immune system, making individuals more susceptible to illnesses. Incorporate stress-reducing activities into your routine, such as mindfulness exercises to maintain mental resilience. Furthermore, consider the impact of the environment on health. Inadequate sanitation can lead to waterborne diseases. Be cautious of local hazards, and adapt your hygiene practices accordingly. Knowledge of local flora and fauna is beneficial to avoid potential health risks. Number four, mental health and morale. Mental health and morale play a pivotal role in navigating challenging circumstances. Recognizing their importance is not just a recommendation, but a fundamental aspect of enduring difficult situations. In times of crisis, Maintaining a positive mindset is a formidable asset. It's more than just optimism. It's about cultivating mental resilience. Acknowledge the challenges at hand, but focus on what you can control. This proactive approach empowers individuals to navigate adversity with a clear perspective. A critical strategy is fostering a sense of purpose. Having a goal, no matter how small, provides direction and motivation. This could involve contributing to the well-being of the community, maintaining personal growth, or working towards a shared objective. Purpose acts as a guiding light during dark times. Connection and communication are vital components of bolstering morale. In group settings, open and honest communication establishes trust and solidarity. Sharing experiences, concerns, and solutions fosters a supportive environment. It's essential to validate the emotional experiences of individuals and collectively work towards shared goals. Implementing stress-reducing activities is not a luxury, but a necessity. These activities vary for each person, but may include mindfulness exercises, physical activities, or engaging in creative pursuits. Regular engagement in stress relief practices contributes to overall mental well-being. Recognizing the signs of mental distress in oneself and others is crucial. It enables early intervention and support. Encourage open conversations about mental health, reducing the stigma associated with seeking help. Establishing a supportive community ensures that individuals feel comfortable reaching out for assistance. Moreover, adaptability is key in maintaining mental health. Recognize that emotions may fluctuate and that's okay. Adapt your coping strategies based on the evolving situation. Flexibility in thinking and actions contributes to sustained mental resilience. Number five, interacting with others. Effectively navigating social dynamics during a crisis is a complex yet crucial aspect of survival. Cooperation is indeed key, but pitfalls can arise when interacting with fellow survivors. Here, we delve into valuable insights on wise interaction. 
emphasizing effective communication, building alliances, and resolving conflicts constructively. Firstly, effective communication is foundational. Clear, concise, and open communication fosters understanding among individuals. Expressing needs, expectations, and concerns transparently prevents misunderstandings. In group settings, regular check-ins can ensure everyone is on the same page, promoting a harmonious and cooperative environment. Building alliances requires a delicate balance of trust and shared objectives. Identify individuals with complementary skills and resources. Collaborate based on mutual benefits, creating a network that enhances collective resilience. Trust is earned through consistent actions, so reliability becomes a cornerstone in alliance building. Resolving conflicts in a constructive manner is an art in itself. Understand that disagreements may arise due to stress and varying perspectives. Rather than escalating conflicts, seek compromise and common ground. Active listening is paramount. Understanding the root cause of disagreements allows for more effective resolution. Recognizing the diversity of skills and knowledge within a group is essential. Every individual brings unique strengths to the table. Encourage the sharing of expertise and experiences, fostering a collaborative environment where everyone's contributions are valued. This not only strengthens the group's capabilities, but also enhances overall morale. In times of crisis, emotional intelligence is a valuable asset. Understanding the emotions of others and managing one's own emotions are crucial for harmonious interactions. Empathy and compassion create a supportive atmosphere, fostering a sense of unity and shared purpose. Additionally, establish clear roles and responsibilities within the group. Clarity minimizes confusion and potential conflicts arising from ambiguity. Define tasks based on individual strengths and distribute responsibilities equitably to promote a sense of fairness and shared ownership. Adaptability is the final cornerstone of wise interaction. Crisis situations are fluid and strategies may need adjustment. Embrace flexibility in group dynamics and be open to modifying plans based on evolving circumstances. The ability to adapt ensures the group can navigate challenges effectively. Number six, limiting movement. Limiting movement is a critical aspect of survival during a crisis, serving as a strategic maneuver to minimize exposure to potential threats. Unnecessary travel not only expends valuable energy, but also increases the risk of encountering unforeseen dangers. Strategic movement involves a careful assessment of the immediate environment. Understanding the geography, potential hazards, and available resources is essential. Travel should be purposeful, aiming to reach a specific destination or achieve a particular objective. Aimless wandering only heightens the chances of stumbling into hazardous situations. Staying put when necessary is a proactive approach to risk mitigation. If the current location provides shelter, resources, and a defensible position, moving unnecessarily becomes a liability. Establishing a secure base camp allows for the conservation of energy and resources, providing a foundation for long-term sustainability. Minimizing exposure to potential threats involves a combination of stealth and awareness. Avoiding high traffic areas and potential danger zones reduces the likelihood of encountering hostile elements. Traveling during off-peak times and utilizing natural cover can enhance stealth, allowing individuals to move more discreetly. Consideration of factors such as weather, time of day, and local wildlife patterns is crucial. Adapting movement to coincide with periods of lower risk, such as avoiding travel at night or during extreme weather conditions, enhances overall safety. Additionally, Understanding the habits of local wildlife can provide insights into potential dangers and safe routes. In essence, limiting movement is not about stagnation, but about strategic decision-making. It involves a nuanced understanding of the surrounding environment, purposeful travel, staying put when advantageous, and minimizing exposure to potential threats. 
This approach to movement is a calculated effort to enhance survivability and navigate a crisis with prudence and efficiency. Number seven, resource management and understanding the environment. Efficient resource management and a deep understanding of the local environment are linchpins for survival in any crisis. This involves more than just stockpiling. It requires a strategic and adaptable approach. Begin with resource management. It's not about accumulating vast quantities, but about sustainable utilization. Assess the available resources and plan for long-term viability. Consider renewable sources like solar energy, rainwater harvesting, and local flora for sustenance. Prioritize essentials like food, water, and medical supplies based on nutritional value and shelf life. Understanding the local environment is equally vital. Know the lay of the land, potential hazards, and seasonal variations. Adapt your strategies to the geographical and climatic nuances of the region. Recognize edible plants, local wildlife patterns, and potential water sources. This knowledge transforms the environment into a collaborator rather than an obstacle. Incorporate a holistic approach to resource management. Establish community cooperation in sharing and allocating resources, preventing disparities. Develop contingency plans for resource scarcity, including rationing and alternative sources. Regularly reassess your strategy based on the evolving circumstances to ensure long-term sustainability. Consider the concept of permaculture, integrating sustainable agriculture and land use practices. This method harmonizes with the natural environment, optimizing resources while minimizing ecological impact. Understanding the principles of permaculture can transform your surroundings into a self-sustaining ecosystem. Adaptability is key in resource management. Circumstances change, and a rigid approach can lead to inefficiencies. Be open to modifying plans based on evolving needs and challenges. This dynamic strategy ensures that your resource management remains effective in the face of uncertainties. Number eight, community, sustainability, and adaptability. Building a resilient community is not just a nicety, it's a strategic imperative for long-term survival. Fostering strong community ties involves more than casual interactions. It requires shared values, trust, and collaborative efforts. Establish communication channels to share information and resources efficiently, creating a network that can withstand challenges. Embracing sustainable practices is not a trendy choice, but a necessity. Sustainability involves minimizing waste, utilizing renewable resources, and harmonizing with the environment. Implementing permaculture principles in community gardens, waste reduction initiatives, and eco-friendly energy sources contributes to both individual and collective well-being. Adaptability is the linchpin that ensures the survival of the community in ever-changing circumstances. Establish flexible decision-making processes that allow for quick adjustments based on evolving situations. Encourage a mindset of continuous learning and adaptation, ensuring that the community remains resilient in the face of uncertainties.